Welcome back guys. Uh, so for those of you keeping track at home, I did manage to completely repair one of these Japanese and uh, 3DS consoles. I even have a stylus for it, uh, but I only have one stylus so I'm going to have to order more. Um, this is, of course, it was a Japanese one, but I did uh, do a CTR transfer on it so that the system UI is in uh, English here. I don't know about you guys, but I I just prefer that. Um, I don't care so much if the uh, eShop compatibility gets broken because this console was used very heavily on the Japanese eShop. But whatever, I just I just got it so that I can play my uh, actual English carts here, and we will update that later. And hey, it works just fine for that now. Uh, so, mission accomplished there. Um, I still gotta clean it up a little. Now that I'm looking at it under the light, I can see how kind of gross it is still. Um, but, functionally, everything is working. Or it was. I swear it does boot games. Oh, there it goes. It was just taking a while. This is the first time I booted this game on this console, I guess. But whatever, it works. No complaints from me. No complaints from the system here. Um, but that's not why I'm here today. Uh, I did go ahead and get in my new screen here. This is my parts console, the water damaged one. I went ahead and desoldered what remained of that charge port just so I can try and make up a footprint within KiCad to make a uh, new charge port. I kind of I used the same design idea behind Blind Eyes. Uh, USB-C port to make a new port for this so I ordered some PCBs those should be here I don't know a week or two hopefully and uh, we'll see how that works but this is just a parts console I've still probably got to extract the cameras and um, speakers and you know everything from the top half of this machine to go into this one into the top half of this machine and then pop the screen in there and that'll get this going. This is my US 3DS. Um, don't really much feel like working on that at the moment. I'll save that for next time because I said I'd work on the Vita. And then I have this here, which is the aftermarket shell that my US 3DS was in. The top half of this console is completely, perfectly functional. I have some lower screen somewhere, but I'll drop this in there when I get the chance. This is a perfectly working Japanese version, um, but the charge port's a little wonky, so I'll replace the charge port on this one, then I'll go ahead and do the swap and everything, because I don't want to go through all the effort of doing the swap when uh, I still have to take it apart again to do the charge port, or, you know, heaven forbid I fuck it up. But, anyway, that's all for next time. So I'm going to go ahead and set this aside. Oops. And let's see if I can't figure out what's going on with this PS Vita here. So this Vita, if you don't remember from last time, it does seem to work, except that the screen doesn't come on. So chances are pretty good it just physically needs a new screen, but I kind of want to tear it down a little bit more and uh, see if I can't get it working beforehand or see if there's some other issues. Um, I've never taken one of these apart before, I didn't even look up any videos, hindsight that might have been a good idea, but whatever, we'll wing it, see what happens. And uh, I'm just going to dive right into it. So this Vita I picked up, this is an OLED model, um, it seems to boot up just fine, but there's nothing on the screen, like you can hear the system UI uh, from the speakers and it did have a memory card in it and the memory card you know it did make like little eject noises and stuff uh, when I pulled the memory card out because I didn't realize it was on but I don't know if I need to remove this to get to where I need to go but screw it I've got time to kill let's see I can't get this going. 
one of my uh, buddies on the Game Boy Discord, yes, I recognize the irony, pointed out to me, whoopsie, that you can actually order an entire PS Vita off of AliExpress. Not like a, an assembled one, mind, but all of the parts are available to build one. And it works out to about the same cost as the uh, regular PS Vita, working PS Vita. Oh, see, those are... Oh, they are a little bit shorter. Okay. I'll have to remember that the pink ones go there. So, you know, if you... The point of what I'm what I was saying, not that you should build yourself a PS Vita, but literally every part you need to build one is available, so if something's broken on yours, no reason not to fix it. So this I'm guessing this plastic frame has to come off. It's probably just clipped on or something. gotta remove all the cables too, that's no fun. Alright, now what the frick? Are those torques? Those are super small. I don't know how well you can see that. I guess those are tiny torques or something. Jesus, yeah they are. They're T2 size Torx. And I can't take them out, my screwdriver just... garbage. You see that? Just twist it up. Um, I guess some T3 won't fit, no. Whatever, I guess... I hope that doesn't have to come out. Oh shit, it might. I see a screw under there. Ooh, that's frustrating and annoying. Alright, well, I'll be right back. Hang on. Okay. Luckily, a fair bit of the screw head is exposed, so I just took my pliers here and just kind of gripped it and cracked them loose and my bit that I just dropped Ugh. even though it's fucked up is still working just fine that's super annoying I hate it when I hate T2 size screws and by the way, if anyone has any recommendations for uh, a decent T2 driver, even if it's just a standalone screw driver, not a bit, I'm all ears. I think I might buy one from Weeha or something. Or where, or whatever, I don't know. That's frustrating. Okay. Well,
Right, so I see no more screws. Unless there's something hiding under one of these shields, but I seriously doubt that. Let's release that. Actually, let's remove this whole thing. It's even better. Okay. Aha. One more screw there. Why would they do that? That's just frustrating. Another pink one. Oh, never mind. That wasn't what I thought it was for. I don't think that was holding the motherboard in. Something is, though. Ah, aha! Behind the camera. Or maybe that's just for the camera. Nah, I doubt it. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Uh, okay, so looks like there are two two ribbon cables on the bottom. I was expecting one for the screen. Oh, there we go. And that just slipped right out. I don't think it's supposed to. Doesn't look broken on my end. I don't see any issue or reason why this shouldn't work. I'm assuming this is the screen. I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah, it says Samsung on the ribbon. It's an OLED screen, so... I'm guessing must be the screen. Plug it back in, reseat it, plug in the power button here. And try it out one more time because what the hell? Why not? Nothing. So, yeah, the screen, I guess, just needs to be replaced here. Oh, you know what? Now that I'm looking at it under light, I can see that it actually is cracked. Well, shit. That was a waste of time. Um, that's what I get for not checking. Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and order a new screen for this, then. And put all of the parts for it in a pile, and hopefully, I don't forget what they all go to. So the screens for these things, I'm going to have to tear this down further, but I'll wait until I get the uh, actual screen. 
the screen is bonded to this faceplate here, so I'm going to have to replace, or maybe not. It's supposed to be, but it doesn't appear to be. Mm, I don't know. For the screen, I'm actually going to prepare ahead of time. But I'm going to go ahead and order one. It's only like 15 bucks, whatever. And uh, hopefully that'll be all I need. Uh, I guess I'll catch you guys next time for the Vita. I'm probably going to do some work on my 3DSs here, but first, I am in the middle of doing laundry, so i got to go check that. Then I'm going to get some lunch, and then I'll be back. I'll catch y'all later. Okay, pardon the background noise. Uh, through the magic of television, I have ordered a part, and, uh, well, here it is. It took all of ten seconds. Um... Spoiler alert, I did already test it out, and the new screen does seem to work pretty nicely. Uh, that seems to be my entire issue. So, uh, basically at this point I just need to swap it out. Again, I still haven't actually reviewed this. I have 100% no idea what I'm doing, which is probably not a good thing, but I don't know. At the very least, it's more fun for me. Um... But looking at this new screen, uh, it looks like it's held in with adhesive or something. Like this peels off and it just sticks down. So as far as removing the screen, I assume that just involves uh, prying, heat, uh, potentially cursing, and probably lots of tears. Yeah, see that just comes up like that. I don't think I need to remove any of this other stuff, but I'm going to just in case. Or at least I'm certainly going to try. Um, rather be safe than sorry. And as far as putting this thing back together, well, it's been in my box of parts long enough now that I've no idea. <laughs> I, I don't remember how it goes back together. I can make some educated guesses, but that's the extent there. At the very least, I do want to get the buttons out of there, so that when I hit this thing with the heat gun, I don't ruin them. And the joysticks, yeah. Now, oh, so like the PSP, those look glued down. That's annoying. I mean, I suppose it's easy enough to replace, but... If you want to mix and match, it's annoying. I don't have a screwdriver here. One sec, I'll be right back. Okay, I went and grabbed some tools from my stash. Again, I really don't think these need to come out, but... Rather be safe than sorry. It's not like they're difficult to remove. I'll also take this opportunity while I have it apart to try and clean up. It's pretty gross in here, especially around the uh, face buttons. Right there. I'm probably going to do that off camera though. Alright. I think that's good. Remove this too, just in case. Alright, 
Oh, and this camera. Why not? I think we're good. I think now I just need to introduce heat and uh, jam this in there. This is going to be a pain in the ass. I think I want to start where like if I want to get leverage, I'd want to start where it's thinnest and then try and work my way around to where it's thick so I don't break anything. Let's see what happens. I'm not too worried about breaking this screen since it's, you know, already broken. Uh, but I would really like to not have to replace this frame as well. I also think I might just go leave this in my car or something. That'll get it plenty hot. Let me go get a better pry tool. Do I have one here? I think I do. Oh, nope, nope. Yeah, I'll be right back. Alright, so while I'm hitting that with the heat gun again, I went and found my other pry tool. You probably can't tell on camera the difference between the ones I've been using and this one in my hand here. But if you can see that logo, maybe. There we go. This is one of those iFixit brand ones. And these are just the cheap AliExpress junk. This is like 10 for two dollars, whereas this is like three for six dollars. Uh, the difference in price is quite, quite significant, but so is the difference in quality. I also found a weak spot up near the top if I just jam that in there. And I was just about to comment that I wasn't too worried about this thing cracking because it's plastic, but I spoke too soon because it cracked anyway. Or maybe just the screen did, I don't know. But either way, for something like this, the right pry tool makes all the difference. But I think I should be inserting these along the way. Yeah, if that screen wasn't dead, it is now. Now that I've gotten a foothold, though, these regular pry tools seem to work just fine. For these cheap ones. I think the heat had a lot to do with that though.
right, that seemed to come out without incident. Oop, except this poor speaker grill. That one seems fine. Uh, looks like there was a little gasket around something there. I don't know what that was for. But, I think we're good. Interesting that this says Samsung. I assume this is a bootleg part because this this looks like it was hand soldered or something. I also don't know why, but this has like adhesive on the bottom that you can peel off. I assume it can just be stuck down. I don't know. I am, however, going to go ahead and pause the video for a little bit while I clean up this adhesive and these gross buttonholes and stuff. Um, oh, I did break something. I don't know what that's from. Would have been like a clip or something. Anyway, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and pause while I clean this up. I'll be back in uh, just a minute, thanks to the wonderful magic of TV. So, through the magic of television, once again, I have this all cleaned up. Uh, I did leave a little bit of adhesive, and I didn't clean up one of the joysticks yet, because I figured some of y'all might want to see what I'm doing. Uh, I just didn't want to do that whole thing on camera, because this seriously took me like an hour to get to a place where I'm happy. But as far as removing this adhesive, all I was doing was sitting there with one of my plastic spudgers and slowly going around the whole thing just scraping like this. In some places um, it didn't come off cleanly like it did there thankfully. So what I did, I had to go through with um, Goo Gone actually I'm trying to dissolve the adhesive, then I cleaned up with uh, isopropyl alcohol and come on, there we go, a uh, microfiber cloth here. We want to remove all the adhesive because I want the new screen to sit absolutely flush with no uh, bumps or any parts sticking up or anything like that. I want this thing to look brand new from the factory. Or at least like it was well taken care of. Not something that uh, someone who has no idea what they're doing tried to refurbish. Um, the buttons I just went through individually again with Q-tips, IPA, and the joystick, I already cleaned this one up. Uh, they're significantly easier to clean up when they're physically not installed in the console. You can see there's lots of dust buildup down there. It helps if we focus on the right thing, huh? But I just took a, an old toothbrush and went along the joystick like that. I don't want to get too involved in cleaning this thing because I believe it works just fine as is, and I don't want to mess that up. And the top of the joystick is still kind of gross, but I can clean that later since that sticks out pretty easily. So, anyway, while I was uh, cleaning up this portion, I had some thoughts here about this, and I was looking at my replacement going thinking about how this looks aftermarket soldered on well that's probably because it was hand soldered um, I'm betting this screen might be OEM Samsung because it does say Samsung on it maybe like a, a reject from the uh, assembly line or something but this faceplate here this is probably new aftermarket and that's where the faceplate and the screen connect because the touch screen and the LCD are just one connector. So this is probably new OEM and then this is probably aftermarket. Though looking at the markings, 
I mean, hell, they look identical. This might even be new OEM. I mean, it even, I don't know what M or J is. And this one has an L, and I can't make out what's on this side, if there was anything, but... I mean, maybe they're both OEM. Who knows? Regardless, um, I think it's a little bit weird that there's these conductive pads here and here, yet it's insulated on mine, so I can't replace those. Uh, I think I might peel off that. Uh, no, I'll leave it. What the hell, it's not doing any harm. Um, these I'll need to move over though. These are, these look like, um, I'm forgetting the name, but they're like little heat transfer pads. Regardless, okay. So this just goes like that. And you definitely want to double check, make sure that everything works before you just kind of set this down. And make sure that you have your speaker grills in there. Um, if necessary, you replace this pad. Oh, that can go on the inside. I guess that's what holds the camera in. I'm not going to replace that. But, like I said earlier, I did already test this out, so I do know it works. Oh, I just noticed a defect in my panel. Hopefully that's all right. Two, three, and four. And I'm going to trim this tab off. before I accidentally stick it down to something that don't need to be stuck down. But I really hope I'm not forgetting something. I'm going to be really disappointed. Alright. Might as well peel that off now. That wasn't nearly as satisfying as I'd hoped it would be. It's also dirty. It's odd. Whatever. Pressing down. Okay. Let's begin reassembly. Now, full disclosure, I'm probably going to have to pause this video at some point and uh, review my old footage to reassemble this because I don't think I remember every step. In fact, I don't think I remember any of the steps. But, uh, you know, we'll, we'll figure it out or something. I do remember the parts I did today, though. I hope. Right, make sure you put your buttons in. In hindsight, I should have ordered uh, some buttons. That'd be pretty cool. Like pop some white ones in there or something. Right. Stick the 
power button back on before I forget. There's a little light pipe here. You want to make sure you don't lose that. Right next to the power button. But uh, otherwise, it's looking pretty good so far. Need the camera. There it is. And we'll forego that gasket. Because, to be honest, I don't really care if it bounces around. It's just the camera. And this one goes on this side. Should just snap in. Apparently, the top goes down first, then it snaps in. This thing must have been really expensive to assemble. There are a shitload of little parts. Cannot imagine oops. Cannot imagine programming an assembly line to do this. Respect to those folks. Alright, and uh, that's where we started today. If you'll excuse me for a few minutes, I'm going to just go over my old footage, make sure I reassemble this in the proper order, because despite the fact that I started this video, I don't know, like 20 minutes ago at this point, 25, I don't know, whatever, um, I actually started taking this apart like month ago and I have completely forgotten the order in which it goes back together. So yeah, I'll be back in a bit. So I started reviewing my old footage uh, to try and get an idea of what to do to put this thing back together but I don't know, after like two minutes I just kind of zoned out so <laughs> didn't get really far with that. Um, have you guys ever watched my videos? God damn, some of y'all have really bad taste. No, I'm kidding. I think we should be good. I I mean, it's vaguely familiar enough that I, I, I think I can do it. And by the way, I've had this plugged in charging, so hopefully it's not completely dead. This charge cable is stupid tight, though. There we go. Oh yeah, my charge cables arrived too, by the way. Alright, so, yeah, like I said, the plan, just dump out all the parts and uh, hope for the best here. Ah, I see how that's supposed to come apart now. Last time, I struggled with it. This time, I don't have to.
Sorry, I was just thinking about last time when I had to deal with this camera. Just plug it in now. That will make my life so much easier. And then I don't think anything else needs to be plugged in on the bottom here except for the screen. PCB back in. Excellent. Okay. Now what? So I uh, pulled up an iFixit guide. I only found one for, um, like, I think it said replacing the 3G antenna instead of a full disassembly, but I don't know. I'll, I'll settle for pictures. I think that should be more than good enough. Problem is, I don't see any good pictures. So, uh, whatever. I have a pile of parts, and I know all these parts need to go in there. That needs to go in there, but I need a ribbon cable first. That one? No. Probably this one. Shoot, can this go both ways? That's a... Uh, wonderful. I don't know which, which one goes... I'm guessing this side, based on the bends in this cable, I'm guessing this side goes to the daughter board here. Oh yeah, that actually looks like it fits a lot better that way too. That looks like it locks in. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. This probably goes like that. I think this goes over the card. I cannot remember. Reinsert that. And, oh, there's one. Bought a new screwdriver. Bought this uh, pros kit thingy. It's the same as my uh, universal screw, oh no it's not. It's the same as my uh, tri-wing though. So, now I'm going to, of course, grab the Torx driver whenever I mean the need the tri-wing, because they have the same handle. I'm gonna have to... I'm gonna have to label it or something. What the hell, man?
still buttered at how absolutely tight those screws were. There's the other one. I'm not going to crank them down as tight as they were because that was just stupid. Alright, this is... This goes to the camera, I believe. Thought so. So I thought there was a screw under the camera. It seems to fit like that. And yeah, okay. hate these stupid little connectors. They work fine until they uh, don't. I think they're only rated for something like 50 cycles. Like you can only unplug them and plug them back in 50 times. And I think even that's generous. I mean obviously you shouldn't have to ever do it that many times, but, you know, just saying. The mini ones are even worse. These are like do UFL, and the WFL ones are something like 10 or 5. That's all plugged in, though. I believe these are for the shoulder buttons here, which I should have cleaned, but I didn't. Oh, that's for uh, that. That needs to be screwed down. Uh, I don't remember if that is a pink screw or a blue screw. I remember, I think these two were the pink ones. I'd have to try going through that footage again. Is there a screw? under this I don't see yeah probably that okay the bottom here. Torx driver. This is my Phillips one. I'm just going to start putting screws in. Hope for the best.
that goes there. said it before, but I'll say it again, I really like that these screws are uh, color-coded, if that's what that's supposed to be. I also just realized I have to remove that 3G card. So there's a part I forgot to install. This comes out a lot smoother with a nice screwdriver. I wonder if this thing would have uh, held up to the torque. The ridiculous freaking torque. Okay. By the way, I, I am still open to suggestions for screwdrivers, even though I have this one now. Not as open to suggestion, but you know. Okay. Man, I'm stoked to get this thing back together. One last thing on my uh, project bench. So for whatever reason, this wire seems to be longer than it used to be. I don't know why, but whatever. All right. This thing, if I recall correctly, goes up here somewhere. Probably in there. Come back to that in a sec. This part probably goes right there. And based on the number of screws I have left, I fucked up. I feel like I should have way more screws. I don't know if a pink one goes in there, but... Pretty sure pink one goes there. Pretty sure pink one goes there. Ah. <sighs> 
This is R. Means this must be L. This goes where? Shit. Okay. So. Yeah, I'll be back in a minute. I gotta go figure out either what I did with these screws or where I put screws that shouldn't be. So, okay, yeah, I'll be back again. Alright, I think I have it figured out. So, first, I'm going to remove this bezel that I just installed. and the adhesive from this screen is going to be stuck to things randomly for months and drive me crazy. Okay, so these screws don't go here. But that does go here. These are screw holes, but I had completely forgotten that we need to put the back panel on. That's where the back panel screws in. And upon reviewing my old footage, I found this. It goes there this. Oh man. I say old footage and you guys are like, just rewind the video. And oh, this stupid thing goes in here. Next, I believe we just need to put in these things. Oops, bezel. Forgot to put the bezel back. And we can put that on there. And I believe, once I got this thing in here, we're good to go. that up, that up, and uh, let's try it out, huh? Oh, before I try it out, let me put, uh, let's 
memory card back in there. See if there's any games or something on it. And... Some card. Okay. Please work. Wah! Ha! 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 Yeah. Full disclosure, I did already change the system menu language to uh, English. Uh, it's still dead, so it wasn't charging. That's cool. I guess there are some games? I don't know what that is. Or at least some apps. Oh, nope. There's me showing my ignorance on how PS Vita's work, yeah. I suppose there's an easy enough way to check. Or not. It's a separate app. It is... Content Manager. Oh. Well, never mind. I'll worry about that later. Let's do, uh... Let's see if it works, huh? Well, I already know it works. Let's make sure everything works. So question, when you insert a game card, it's supposed to uh, do something, right? So, there we go. I think we're good to go. Just gonna wait for this stupid thing to load up so I can uh, test out all the buttons. Oh, but this game has a bunch of unskippable cutscenes, I think. <sighs> I have a save on my other Vita. I don't know. I have no reason to believe it doesn't work. I think we're good. And I just want to point out, as someone who has a Vita Slim, this... oops. Oh, hey. What am I doing? I, I always get confused because, uh... The O and uh, X buttons are swapped in the system, but not necessarily in the game. So that works, that works. I don't think that does anything in this game. That works, that works. Yeah, I think we're good. There we go. There's my 50-something uh, 
odd dollar Vita with a um, 15 as in 1.5 dollar screen and it came with that 16 gig card which I think is pretty sweet. Um, now all that's left is just physically clean the thing because it's pretty darn gross. But uh, yeah, there we go. Thanks for sticking with me guys. Have an excellent evening. Almost forgot something dumb here. Um, I did plug it in, it does charge, it's just the charger that I did have it plugged into wasn't working. It seems to work fine off this power bank though. Um, but the thing that I forgot, uh, there's still eight screws missing, because <laughs> I didn't put them in. So there's the four black ones on the back. I did start cleaning this thing, but the microfiber cloth I was using is apparently really dirty, and so I think I was making it worse. But I'll get a fresh one. I'll get a clean one. Alright. Then, there's two silver ones on the bottom. I'm going to use... I have two clean silver ones and two dirty silver ones. I'm going to use the clean ones on the bottom, even though the dirty ones were originally the ones on the bottom. But only because I think it looks better. they were around that port, weren't they? Yeah. In fact, I wonder if I can just clean these real quick. Nah. Not worth it. Don't really care. So for those curious, I did already check it out. This thing is on firmware version 3.01, which technically is not an exploitable version, but it means I can update it to an exploitable version. And I'm probably going to do exactly that so I can install emulators and shit. Wow, you can't even... Yeah, you can tell it's an old version of the firmware because you can't use the D-pad and shit. That's annoying. But yeah, there we go. It's charging up nicely. I'll have to set the time and stuff. There we have it. Have a good night, guys.